What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Down to Earth with Christian Harloff. This is the Monday through Friday daily UAP news channel where we cover the stuff going on in the world of UFOs, what's happening, what's flying around in the skies. That is the question. So there was a lot. By the way, we just hit 20,000 subscribers, so thank you very much. Continue on. Hit that button. Be part of the conversation. Let's get to 50 um, because there needs to be more questions from people who are asking exactly what is going on. What do you believe it is? What do you think it is? Is it some kind of otherworldly entity? Is it interdimensional? Is it another country? Is it balloons? Whatever you think it is, put your comments in there. Let's have a conversation about it. Someone who's had strong opinions on it recently, uh, for a long time, is Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan had someone else on his show today, and Tucker Carlson, who I had never heard him talk about this subject until recently. And he had David Grush on, and he's had he's had a, a handful of people on on his show to talk about this, and he seems pretty convinced, more so, not just with opinions when he talks to Rogan about certain things. And the first the the what the fun thing is to do is like it was because I, I started getting texts and emails and things about like, hey, there was this interview from um, from Rogan and, and Carlson, but now it's gone. What does that mean? The government's shutting it down, and. Then it came out a little little bit after everyone started losing their mind and grabbing the audio and all that. Um, and people and I even said, I said, like, well, was it edited? And like, no, it's this exact same video. And it just turns out that and Rogan tweeted out about it. That Jamie had put it up at 12 a.m. when he's supposed to be up, supposed to go up at 12 p.m. So no big conspiracy there. So you tell them there it is. But you're always anytime it's related to this stuff, you're gonna get that. But they start right away talking about this thing, and they talk about Kona Blue, that project that we covered the other day. And what I thought was very interesting was, again, it's very, it's, what got me in this entire interview was the answers that Tucker would give Rogan were so definitive, almost like he knew, and certain times, and we'll talk about it in this piece, that there were times where he was trying to keep quiet his source or people who he was talking to that one, he pretty much hints and you know exactly who he's talking about. And then another time he's about to, he's like, well, I know someone who happens to be a doctor here. And Rogan goes, Gary Nolan? He's like, yeah, that's who. And so there's moments like that. And he's having a lot of conversations with people. And he's hearing a lot of information that he's really been convinced. So here is the stuff with the uh, Kona Blue. Let me, let me play this clip. They just released, I think, by accident. How's that happen? It's Kona Blue. <laughs> You familiar with this? No. Kona Blue is a um it was a program that yeah, dude. They I'm gonna send this to Homeland Security just released this. Send it to me, I'll send it to Jamie. And uh this is so amazing. So this is in there. They're talking about this, and this was just released. They're talking about setting up this program, Kona Blue. I didn't get it. Uh, this is like a UAP program of some yeah. sort. Yeah, the medical division will have a small team of medical analysts under the direction of the chief physician and deputy administrator. They will organize data into a threat analysis based on medical findings, including but not limited to A, deaths and injuries as a result of interaction with advanced aerospace vehicles. Here it is. B, it is medical injuries as a result of other anomalies. C, collateral injuries, psychological effects to family members. So they're admitting that people are dying. It's just like a tweet from yesterday. Is this it? Yeah. Ago. What does that mean? Another indication that I'm getting. Do you ever wonder if stuff like this is just disinformation? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I I wonder if I wonder a lot of things. I'm sure you do. <clears throat> but um I would always, always always assume that a lot of this stuff is nonsense. Yeah, here's what we know is that retrieving data across dimensional space time, develop remote viewing comms and count, uh, countermeasures, determine baseline for physical transport across dimensional space time barrier, rapid response medical teams for UFO interaction events. So how did they do this accidentally? Study conscious interactions with and control of technology so i got this from someone in the u.s government who's 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 well, well 
look, let me let me just start by saying, I, you know, I don't know anything. Um, but he sent me this. The above is 100% legit. I was read into this program, but told never to tell anyone. It's now been released. As you can see, um, it began as a result of my old program, AATIP. Um, I signed a document saying I would never talk about Kona Blue and similar efforts. I can't believe that AARO would have released it. Hmm. Look, I, I, you know. Yeah. I mean, here's what we do know is that there's enough going on in the skies, but not just the skies underwater, that you, the U.S. military has been forced to respond to it. So, like, move aircraft from one place to another because there are too many of these objects in the sky. That's actually happened. Chris Mellon just wrote a long piece about it. Um, so it's real. The government is not controlling it. In fact, it's forcing the government DOD to respond. Um, and we know that there is a, a real effort and has been underway for a long time to to keep the public from knowing about. It. Okay. So when you hear that, that program in general, and clearly it seems like he mentions ATEP and all that. It, it, clearly, he's talking about Lou Elizondo. I, I mean, I say clearly, it just seems to fit. Um, and that that is why, inside of that report, it also confirms that that program existed, which there's been debunkers that say that program never existed. Well, in that report, in the Kona Blue thing, it hints that it, that it indeed was. And to kind of go off, and this is because I didn't understand this the other day when I was talking to Pavel about it, um, where Rogan said the disinformation part of it. I think that, that the whole point of them releasing it was was the disinformation where they said, hey, look, we're putting this out. This is what we tried to do, but the DOD said, no, we can't do this. So we don't have any reverse engineering program to where Tucker's contact, potentially Lou Elizondo said, no, this program is definitely real, was happening. I was a part of it. I couldn't talk about it. And it's interesting that they're even releasing it. So... Um, there was a lot there and that's not where the conversation stopped. It, it went on for quite a bit and it went on more so to ask because Rogan's been a little bit more, I don't want to say skeptical because he does believe that there's things flying around in the sky like we all do, but he doesn't have a, 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 a stance on the fact of like, this is exactly what it is. It's definitely otherworldly. It's definitely interdimensional. He didn't, he didn't, he's, he even said at one point, he believes it's, it's us. And what was interesting about it, he said, I believe that it is, Rogan's explanation was, I believe that it is stuff that we have here um, that we have been working on, the anti-gravity stuff, and and we've made technology that has basically been able to do this stuff, which I don't disagree with. But then Tucker followed up with, yeah, but how did we get that stuff? To which Rogan said, good point. You know, how did we get that stuff? And that was the stuff that started to happen. Then it started to be more about what it is. And then there was the the explanation of what Tucker thought it was. And this is what he told Rogan. So they're from here and they've been here for thousands of years, whatever they are. And um, it's pretty clear to me that they're spiritual entities, whatever that means, they're supernatural. And which is to say supernatural means above the natural, above the observable uh, nature. And... Um, they don't behave according to the laws of science as as measured by people, you know, and um, and they've been here for a long time. And there's a ton of evidence that are under the ocean and under the ground. So, like, with that fact set, what do you conclude? So when you look at that stuff, I mean, it's and what's funny is that that's been theorized by people that's been talked about, and especially with the interdimensional stuff, they've been here for a while. That type, that's been said by by other theories in general about what these things could be. And, and then it got a little bit more into the dark stuff. And then Rogan asked him about how he was so convinced on this stuff. And then he talked about how he wasn't, didn't know anything about it until 2017 when people started telling him and then, he, then it got a little darker. He believes it's spiritual. He doesn't believe it's otherworldly. And a lot of people feel that exact same way. Um, and they also talked about how these things have hurt servicemen these things have done things and then there was that whole thing that came out that report that 60 minutes did on the um the havana syndrome which i, I was still trying to shake my head to figure out what it exactly is but just the only reason i bring it up is because of this kind of the lou elizondo kind of commented on it and then tucker carlson said this about gary nolan 
to, I interviewed someone who was a Stanford medical school professor who's, who's out there and worth talking to, by the way. And I'm um, talking about Gary Nolan. That's exactly who I'm talking about. I was an, effectively an expert witness in these mm -hmm. cases. So he's an expert in brain injury. Do you know him? Yeah. Yeah. Entirely credible person. Um, checks all the boxes that I care about. He's He's got patents. So he's like a lot of Stanford University professors. He's like independently rich. He flew to, I live in a remote place and he flew to my place at his own expense because he wanted to tell the story. So he, he's got no profit motive here. He's the most highly credentialed person at the university, practically Stanford Medical School. We consider that a big deal. Uh, and he's worked on this for you know over 10 years, um, assessing the injuries to U.S. servicemen from being in close proximity to these objects or having contact with these objects. And his conclusion, as you know, because you've talked to him, is that there's some kind of energy coming off here that scrambles people's brains or kills them. And it's not exactly radiation, um, at least in his telling to me. So anyway, but the point is, people have died. So there's a lot of stuff that is just making your head kind of get, get your head scrambled, so to say, because there's just a lot of information because he's bringing up names and he's talking to people that we bring up all the time. Have your opinion on Tucker Carlson, whatever you want to say about him as far as po uh, political goes. But this is where we have to go into the um, bipartisan of it all. And you have to say, this is someone who's really diving down to find out what's going on and is talking to the likes of Gary Nolan, is talking to Lou Elizondo, it looks like, he's talked to, to David Grush, right? Um, because he wants these questions to be answered. He even brought up stuff with like, with uh, the Manhattan Project and other things. It's a fascinating interview when you really dive into it, talking about consciousness and other things. So there was a lot to come out of it, but I'm not doing this on my own today. I want to bring in my good buddy, Attack Peter. Here he is. Hey, what's up, man? There's a lot today, man. Yeah. There was a lot. So what what stood out to you in this interview overall? Where where do you land when you hear this entire thing? Because it, it was a good start of like the first 15, 20 minutes, and, and, and they really kind of dove deep into this stuff. So, um, you know, the thing is, I've been noticing Tucker Carlson's kind of like doing this rebranding uh, tour and I and you have to talk about him as you know him just because he's the focal point of the conversation right now clearly he's talking to Gary Nolan clearly he's talking to Lou Elizondo and um you know I I, I know you know I, I I know about you know Tucker's history as a political commentator and all that and I I, I don't know I I have to tell you like like this this is something that that I'm torn on and I'll and I'll give you both sides of it see what you think a, I think potentially he's just doing a rebranding and looking at what the hot topics are for a different demographic that he's trying to appeal to. He's trying to be getting to the Rogan universe. He's doing like uh, all the the guests that would circulate on there. He's had comedians on now and talking to them. You know, maybe he's trying to shake off his his old uh, persona of you know what he's known for. And so he's just kind of like grifting, maybe, right? There's that. And then the other side of it is, you know, there's points in the conversation where he seems contrite. You know, he seems like he's regretful of the person person he used to be publicly. And he seems like he's changing his views on certain things, on all, although not all of them. And um, and maybe he's just open to something different now. And people like Lou Elizondo and Gary Nolan, like, all right, we can talk to this guy and maybe we can you know, use him as a mouthpiece um, and feed information through where they can't publicly say certain things. Or, and there's the final one, they could be using him. You know what I mean? So it's like, it could be that you use someone like him to d disseminate more information. I don't know, man. But if we're talking about the document itself, the document is not the first thing I think of if it's legit, right? If it's the legit. Kind of, the kind of blue one? Yeah. Yeah. If it's legit, the first thing I thought about when I saw it, I'm like, okay, well, it kind of starts from the perspective of remote viewing is a real thing. Like that's the first thing I took away right. from it, right? right? Like it starts, it starts saying like it almost is like remote viewing is legitimate. That's a given. And because of that, we want to build these programs on top of it. Um, you know, I, I've seen some chatter online, Stephen Greenstreet uh shouting it down saying it's nonsense it's basically like he calls it like the the bigelow spookies like the rubber bigelow crew asking for money from dhs and getting turned down because it's silly i don't know if things are that simple but i guess it's possible 
but the idea that it touches on some of the things that keep getting brought up, which is, you know, using remote viewing to access um, certain things or hey, taking care of the remote viewers by prov providing health care in case they have an interaction with UFO or whatever it is, or UAP, uh, you know, controlling the craft through consciousness. These are the things that keep coming back. And what my, what I always go back to is like, if you were going to create a sexy myth to distract people on from your military industrial complex, you know, growing in a way that you don't want people paying attention to, I feel like consciousness controlled vehicles isn't the sexiest story like that's a little you know what i mean yeah. so that that kind of always interests me like i always want to pull on that thread a little bit yeah. more because it's just too like it's too out there to, to hang your hat on if you want to distract people that's if, true. If you want to distract the general chewing gum public that's true and it's because it sounds so far-fetched and it's, it's too sounds, out there you can't even grab it you know what right, i mean right and when you when the one that i really when I started to, because I'll be completely honest, when I first heard any of that, I was, I was in that far fetched. I am like, it sounds great to be able to, you know, do that, to project yourself somewhere else to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds amazing that the human brain is, can do that. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And, but I was like, it's not real. It's just a fun thing that people are thinking of. Like they're just watching too much star Wars and they want to use the force, you know? And then it was the Y files that got me thinking of when they, when they broke down, the, the, that actual program and the people that were involved in the program and the names that were connected to to the community in general that were also connected to you know like like Hal Putoff and yeah. how how connected he was to that whole program and and I spoke on it and then I started to take it a little bit more serious and then as you said when this report came out too it's like the idea of it and I always and I bring this up and I think I brought it up before. Um, I think I might have brought it up when I talked to Danny Sheehan. The one that stood out to me was the case in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. with the kids. And what mm -hmm. the parent creature said to one of the kids was that you don't know what the human brain is really capable of. You don't know what you're capable of. You know, you know, and that idea and that and and the fact that in that report, and I would recommend people to look up that Zimbabwe case if you don't know it, but the creature wasn't talking to her, it was using its mind and the human child was was listening to it via its mind so the idea of that is fascinating obviously and there's things that i think that we definitely that we there's parts of the human brain that we just don't fathom and i know how to say like even simple things like for some reason i don't know why this is for some reason every time i am i'm near a sink and and i whether it's in my kitchen and it's always every it's all my life in the kitchen, I turn on water. In one particular kitchen, wherever I live in that apartment, I'm my thought and my memory goes to a particular time. And it's always the same particular moment in my time that I think of, whether it's like, let's say, I don't remember specifically, but I turn on the water and my mind goes to uh, 2007 when I was doing stand up at this place and the people, and it's always in that time period, right? I don't know why my mind goes there every time I turn on the water. I'm not saying that it's anything in general, but it's just connected to something. And it's connected to the way that, and, and I'm not even saying that that's so supernatural. I'm just saying that there's something about the human brain that it works that we don't really understand. You know, we don't know. And to project yourself somewhere, and I've been paying a lot of attention to manifestation and those things. And those, what, that whole the whole process of that is projection and and connection to the universe and the idea that you can do these certain things in different dimensions and it's it's just weird that it all kind of seems like it's coming together but yet it's so far apart does that make sense yeah i mean i i i'm dude i'm a firm believer in that in that the idea of manifestation but in the sense that it's like you can will things into reality. I, I, when when I started developing, you know, success in my career, I used to tell my wife Gabby all the time. I'm like, I think we're in the matrix or some kind of simulation because we're just saying things like this. It would be awesome if this happened, and then things right. would happen. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying it's like some. It's not magic. Ooh. No, it's not magic. I don't know what it does. I don't know if like if like really having a strong idea starts to direct my actions subconsciously or something. That's but your exactly point. What it is. That's your exactly point is it. yeah. Your point is well taken, and that. If if there's anything to it, it's probably a spectrum in terms of how powerful it can be, right? And clearly, I'm starting to really have a tough time 
disbelieving the remote viewing thing. I'm mm-hmm. I, like I'm having a tough time lo- writing that one off nowadays. What do you take? What do you take from you know? Obviously, we both think it's Lou Elizondo that he was talking about. 100%. So, what do you think about that? Because you know, Lou has said a lot of things right and the yeah. fact that he's talking to tucker and saying look this, this is a real program i was part of this program i'm surprised that they even you know released this because i was told i can't even talk about it well so- it's a human thing right like it's, like a, it's a very human aspect uh of lou there the thing with lou elizondo for me is that i can't put my finger on my gut feeling towards him yet you know um, I think the fact that he's not out there every other week doing podcasts is a, is a sign that he's not just trying to like make a career for himself off of this, not trying to be the guy. Um, the fact that he's talking to Tucker Carlson is interesting to me. I'm like, why? Like, you, I, I would imagine that guy's like has bigger fish to fry, or that's one of the few people who he can talk to. You know, that is going to take it seriously right now and and not write it off because it's not corporate capture. Um, but yeah, dude, I, I really think that the way this thing is going to break, the more resistance there is, the more, you know, shutting things down there is, it's going to be something like this, dude. Like we've yeah. been talking about it forever. Like I don't have, there's no doubt in my, like I have, you, how do I say this? I don't, I wouldn't be surprised, let's say, if someone like Lou did leak it through a series of mm-hmm. channels. Right. You know what I mean? And then is like, or, you know, or through a, a network that's not traceable back to him is like, you know, and that's what I think disclosure, if it's to happen, is going to happen like it's that. Sure, seems like it right now because after the documents that came out, you know, with with trying again with potentially sh- saying that there are some inaccuracies to what David Grush was saying. Um, if you saw that whole thing yesterday, yeah. uh, if you and then and there was other and then Ross Coulthard put out something today that kind of can that got, goes against that. But there's always yeah. this kind of this battle, as you said, as the people who are going to want to do the debunks and people like because right now where we are is that the debunkers, no matter what you show them, the reporters are going to no matter what you show them right now, they're going to go. You got nothing that's going to convince me. Unless Which is a problem too. But on the flip side of that, there's also the side that says you know that goes out like i saw people like when the guy who the reporter who reported that just got the documents on grush he's doing he's he's releasing documents he's 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 doing his he's doing his job on that one Mm -hmm. and then there are the the you know the full disclosure people that are saying you know we're gonna uh the fact that you're you you got to learn how to hide your router man it's like what are you doing what are you doing what are you doing it's like and and it's it's like you gotta you gotta be on you can say you're wrong here for these documents and with the report that you're saying we're going to prove the fact and let grush come out and say it because i right. happen to i i believe grush i believe grush and i think that there's going to be i think that there's going to be um more facts that come out about grush and certain things that kind of combat that report it's just my personal belief but you got to do it in the way like okay the guy's doing his job you put out this report and now it's the job and the other people to go no 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 here it is that's just the way it works threats on either side and the, the complete like there's nothing you can say. I'm just going to prove you're all kooks. It's like, that's not helpful to anybody. And it's just kind of like, it's because there are you, there's certain reporters that is like, ha ha ha. They even have in the profile. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's like, that's not going to help anybody on either way, on either way. It's, you should, you should always ask questions. You should always, like you just said, I thought you said it brilliantly where, when it comes to, I don't know what to say when I hear Tucker Carlson say, it's, is he trying to reinvent himself? Is he trying to do this? All your points were completely valid. And then there's a side of it. But what if there's the truth of it? I think that's the way you got to approach this thing because we don't have any solid proof right now. Other people might, but anybody watching this video, me, you, most people, we had no solid proof. And until exactly what you just said, someone's got to either leak something big like they did in 2017 or, you know, whistleblowers got to come out, more of them. Um, that's what needs to happen because you can have people like Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan all day long talking about, well, this is what I heard. This is a thing. I believe this. You'll get the word out to more people, but you won't prove it to anyone until something big happens. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's the, the, the important thing about having a channel like this is that it's kind of a lull period right now. I mean, well, the yeah. Kona thing was big, you know, a big pop, but it's kind of a lull based on where it was in terms of like chatter and interesting stuff going back and forth and all that 
and uh having channels like yours and and up here doing this and and like what what that's happening at when vetted and and stuff like that just keeping the conversation going i think is really important because you know there needs to be this constant pushback between people who are saying and to me that the, the the worthy sides are people who are saying i don't know what's going on i really want to know more this is fascinating and if and there's almost no way it's not met in, in incredibly important and then there's the other side which is like okay but hold on this might not be true this might be fake this might be that those two things i think are important to keep going back and forth because then it is on people like grush or lou elizondo or whoever to say, finally say you know what guys here boom you know and uh and that and i think that's the only way it's gonna happen it's the only way it's gonna happen that yeah. you kind of say I think Lou Elizondo is full of crap. And then now Lou Elizondo or someone associated with him goes, goes well, here's something, you guys. Boom. And then so, the, you know, the, someone else has to check him on that and then vice and then back and forth. Agreed. And, you know, one of the we Gary Nolan is the one that they mentioned this will be the last yep. thing I, I asked you about is that where you, you and I kind of laughed about it when we were, did that report on the Havana syndrome because I clearly didn't really know what the hell was going on in that report. You still didn't kind of figure it out. But this does seem out of the stuff that came out of that 60 minutes report and the stuff that that was hinted by again lou elizondo that when tucker brings this up to rogan about the brain scrambling and stuff that does seem kind of in the same lane of what they were talking about with that doesn't it i mean yeah like, like if you look at those four points or whatever that were did, did you, you you have those right those four points yeah. that like, are like or whatever yeah. retrieving data across dimensional space time that's wild, right? That like that's basically saying dimensional space time is a thing that we're trying to en engage in and, and interact with and and send data back and forth or whatever yeah. it is. Develop remote viewing comms. I mean that that's based, you know, you know, what I'm and countermeasures. So it's basically like a remote viewing like war mm -hmm. or battle or something like that. And then uh, baseline for physical transport. That's something, by the way, that has come up a lot. The baseline for physical transport across dimensional space time barrier. That's what people have been saying. Like there are, even if it's our technology or another country's technology, it's like this anti grav technology that we can't figure right. out how to put a person in because it's, you know what I'm saying? Right. So that's something that comes up a lot. And then res rapid response medical teams for UFO interaction events. Of course, if, if you are saying that any of that is legitimately a need for some program that's trying to figure this stuff out, then how far stretched could a the, uh, a direct energy weapon be? I can't understand it. I can't explain it. Nobody seems to be able to prove that it's real. But if you're telling me, like, is there a non-zero chance that it's real? I would say, yeah. Yeah, it's all it's it's all crazy. It's all and by the way. Can I say something? Yeah. The other day, I was when I was on your show, we were talking about it. I made a joke that I said, "I'm Cuban and I don't understand it." And someone in the comments was. Being Cuban has nothing to do with it. I'm like, guys, I know it was a terrible dad joke, but just come on, ride it with me there a little bit. <laughs> well, either way, to get it's, yeah. that's it's always the best joke when you got to explain it a week exactly. later. Uh, so, look, Peter, as always, man, thanks for joining us on the show. Here, we'll see you on the uh, on the big thing pretty soon. Yeah, man, appreciate it. Uh, okay, so uh, first of all, as I mentioned, big thing. You want to see Peter uh, Riley Favell on the big thing? Well, this Tuesday, as of right now, Jesse Michaels is coming on the show. We got Avi Loeb, Avi Loeb coming up also so we got a lot of big guests coming up on that show if you want to check that show out it's just my name the christian harloff channel you can subscribe over there we also do a lot of pop culture stuff and other things but this is the channel this is the uap news channel where we cover these stories so i got to hear your thoughts i'm sure there'll be a lot of them here all the clips that i showed if you watch the full interview where do you stand on all this where what what do you think what do you think is going on? You know, do you kind of side in the fact of what Rogan was saying there too, that this might just be um, technology that we have that are, that we, that that's what we're seeing out there. What do you think about this stuff with the consciousness, the remote viewing, all of it, does it play into it or is it just too science fiction for you? But I got to hear your comments. So once again, subscribe to the channel. Let's get to 50,000 now, now that we hit 20, hit that button. Hit the like button, tell people about the channel. And as always, I'm here. I ask questions, and so should you. All right. See you later.